Sheroling here. Um, I was uh, videoing myself going to Chino. I was in shock yesterday. So it's been a struggle with my father. Uh, when I say a struggle, it means that uh, it's a long story. Uh, my dad lives in Taiwan, or he lived in Taiwan, uh, but he chose to die in the foreign land. He, um, I tried to uh, commit suicide. When I say that, it means uh, assisted suicide. And uh, I, I know that you know, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, that we are saved. Once we're saved, that we received Him as. Our Lord and Savior because of our imperfection. Um, I, I'm holding this book because that's what he looked like. Uh, he was a sportscaster. He fought. He was a remnant. Uh, as back in China, at the Fu family, we were we were very rich and prosperous. And and uh, I, I know my um, uh, great grand grandfather. They are very powerful people and there were brigade generals and uh, um, I believe they're feisty, feisty fighters. Um, you know, they're from the northern part of China. So I, I don't know why I'm, uh, you know, you just have to forgive me. Uh, because so many things came to my mind. I try not to cry. Uh, I know I'm wearing this, rice girl. I hope that he will be proud of me one day because I'm a fighter too. Maybe I'm not as good a fighter as my father, Frank Fu. He was a fighter. He was discarded. He had a very bad temper. He was actually bipolar. He was also abandoned because there were so many concubines. So when I say that, that's back in old China, there were uh, many mistresses since, uh, you know, like generals, they, they usually have several wives. And I believe my dad was a seed from the last concubine that she was beloved. Um, but because all the other women were jealous of her, so they killed her. Um, she died. Anyway, so uh, they persecuted my father and threw him out um, for no good reason. The story was that that some other uh, women were, were committing uh, adultery or something like that, or, you know, they, they were having sex with another servant, another man's servant, and uh, he, my dad, as a kid, stumbled onto the scene, that's is what he said, and then they beat the shit out of him because they were afraid that he was going to tell on them, but he was just a kid. Uh, so, what reminded me as the Joseph because they persecuted Joseph because he was beloved. Uh, but that, this is why I forgive my father because he doesn't know, he did not know when I said doesn't, I mean I know it's a past tense, he did not know how to love. He was also scattered. Uh, so what I'm saying is um, he like he loves sports because he was a uh, he was a very handsome man. I, I don't know if I have a picture. He wrote this book himself. Uh, he said, Ling Er, uh, God loves you and I love you. It was amazing. Uh, you know, he was by himself. He was trying to uh, play basketball. He not just tried, he actually made it to the uh, Chinese basketball team. And uh, I don't know which picture. I'm sorry, I was just sorry. I tried to be strong. I went and told my mom the bad news. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know, my little mom is, uh, I'm breaking down. Uh, he was a very handsome man. He played basketball and he was very tall. Uh, he was very less athletic and gifted. He was smart. So uh, that's how I went. He met my mother. And they were very poor because you can't make a living. Uh, this is not like NBA uh, in that part of China, per se, uh, because he was persecuted. He was very poor. And uh, I heard of the story that uh, he walked to the uh, noodle vendor, and this is what really killed him. It's, well, I'll tell you later, it's a carbohydrate. 
I know Chinese people love that their noodles and rice, but that's what kills him. That's what kills you in the end, because um, that's what feeds the cancer cells. Um, but in he also drank. He was a, a you know <laughs> very much of a a drinker. They just suck it up. That's like oh we are Gandhi. There's no tomorrow. Let's suck it down. That's like a heroic behavior uh, in China, as you know. Like you have to show your uh, loyalty by sucking down just show everything your uh, you know uh, page uh, patronage to a certain uh, I guess uh, uh, employer or subordinate and all that kind of stuff uh, anyway so he's uh, all right I want to see if I can find him playing basketball he really leaped high um, he was not perfect by no means I don't want to get distracted so if I find out I'll let you know uh, anyways, he met my mother, and that was the first love. So, as far as I knew, because they were so poor, um, they decided, they, they had, like, two pregnancies with my mom, and, uh, uh this is what I found out later, uh, they had those two babies, unborn babies, aborted, and I knew, even though my dad never told me that, he regretted it, uh, that he thought one of them uh, was a male child. He did not know. So this is his, um, what do you call it? imperfection? And and he he was just so obsessed with having the man child. Um, and I have to say that in general, China uh, was killing, really, literally drowning women babies uh, when they had like a one child policy. So it is a stubborn. Uh, you know, a, a, a tradition, a superstition, and, and uh, definitely, I don't believe it's from the Lord, because I was a female fetus, I was not aborted, so I was born into the poverty scene, when I say poverty, like, nobody had any money, um, you know, he barely... He was uh, trying to uh, play basketball. That's his hobby because you can't, uh, you know, make money. It's not like the NBA, not millions of dollars. And then he did the, uh, um, my dad did the um, broadcast for sports because he loves sports. So he went on the radio and people loved him because he was so enthused. He was saying like, top and dolphin. It means like, um, you know, they dribble, 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 and then he takes a shot, oh my God, it's like that. You know, people want to dramatize it. And uh, he kind of did that and made it very interesting. Uh, over the radio, he was most uh, popular, even though in the days of his popularity, uh, sorry, <laughs> he was at the um, Chinese, it's, it's weird, Jin Cha Guang Bo Dian Tai. It means that there was their uh, stayed on. Everything is stayed on. Uh, all right, there are radio stations. So, uh, when I was a, a child, so what happened is uh, because, like I said, of poverty and what have you, and he had a very bad temper and drinking and all that kind of stuff. Um, my mom left. Uh, they had huge fights and everything. And I, I believe I saw like glass shatter, and I was hiding. I was hiding under the table as a, as a little infant fetus. Well, this is what I remembered, um, that there was a family, you know, because they were, even though they were poor, they would give, try to give me their best, all right? So uh, my mom would give me a bath with the, the kind of, a, it's, a, it's a weird, like a bucket. That's how they wash the baby and everything. And then they would look at me like I'm kind of a little prize, and I'm, I was so embarrassed as a kid. Um, I really tried to please them, but as a child, I can also sense that when there there was uh, this violence, I, I can see it. I mean, I sensed it. It ricocheted my soul. Uh, so mother disappeared. I guess there were fights, and there were windows smashing. That's all, all I know. There were people in the house. I suppose what happened, maybe I, my dad was drunk and came home, and my mother was playing mahjong, and, you know, he just, like, blew up for no reason. He said, oh, the baby's crawling on the floor. You're playing mahjong and smashing the windows, and I was crying. Maybe my, and my mom was in a hospital, and I think maybe she was trying to commit suicide or whatever. I don't know, next thing I know, mother disappeared. 
uh, went to uh, probably was recruited from by African team of nurse. So, so she went to Libya per se. At that time, Libya uh, was much, much better. Um, that's another lesson that, you know, let's not get rid of the so-called dictators. Gaddafi was not a good man, but at least he was not with the Muslim Brotherhood. He was for, he was loyal to the United States. Uh, with that said, so she lived, she was okay with it. Uh, but I didn't know. I, I, I mean, I was just crawling on the dirt floor, and um, as, as I was saying, he was working as a cop, and then he was broadcasting. He had no money, uh, he, and uh, you know, we had crazy nannies that tried to strangle me. Seriously, crazy people, because over that area of so-called Shaolin, there was like some. Uh, they were so poor anyway, so it had some mental ill. People try to nanny me this way because it cost them like zero, it cost them nothing. Um, <laughs> anyway, that didn't work out because the crazy people tried to strangle me. And I remember clearly when they put that pillow over my head, I was like, I was dying. I was giving everything as a little one, as a little person. I was giving everything to, I was like, ah. Um, I don't know how you feel when you were a kid, you wish you were bigger because size really matters uh, when you're a kid, you couldn't find them. Uh, but anyways, I survived that. Uh, I don't know why I get into all this. Uh, so he gave me away in the middle of the night because he couldn't figure out what to do. And he was, my dad, he, he was saddened when he came home from work and saw me crawling on the dirt floor and you know putting something like unknown, like a cockroach in my mouth. I mean, when you're a kid, you eat everything, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, he couldn't play with me uh, because I was like, I was begging him before he leaves for work. I said, come on, just like give me a little uh, spin. Like uh, a, a kid likes to have daddy throw you in the air and uh, and then you go, what? And then, you know, you fall and then he catches you. Oh, I was that pretty nutty. Uh, anyway, he couldn't do it. So I knew he was grieved, but he never told me as a child that I cannot take care of you. I'm gonna give you to Auntie or whoever. So that was scary that he, uh, in fact, woke me up in the middle of the night. He didn't try to wake me up, but in the middle of the night, he only had a scooter. So he planned this out and I was in a scooter in, you know, in the dark and I was like shaking. I was really afraid. I did not know where he was taking me. Uh, so he dropped me off and this was all pre-planned. I didn't know who it was, I just remember it was dark because you remember there's a little village of China, there is no electricity. So it was dark when I got there. It was just a staircase and somebody, a shadow appeared and then he just yanked me out. I was, I was trying to hold on to him with my dear life. That's like scared as shit. <laughs> he yanked me and gave me away. And I was like, please, I was crying. Oh my God, this looks bad. So maybe I have to stop here. Uh, I was just trying to tell you about my dad, but you know, I'm breaking down. Uh, all right, so whatever. I'm not gonna go into all that, but I'm just saying he was doing what he knew at that time. I need to forgive him because he went nuts. He shout to drink, he come visit me. He came to me, visit me. Uh, I, I told you I was scared shitless. I saw these folks. I did not know who they were. Uh, as a as a child, I had nightmares. It means like a night terror. I was clawing onto my dad's neck. Like, ah! Because I thought I was going to die. I saw these people. Well, I heard those fairy tales that they were called tiger people. Who go poor. Uh, they will raise you in a, in a cage and make you really fat, and then they will cook you. And that's I thought who she was. I had no idea. She did not look like my mother. Uh, she was my mother's sister. So all these, uh, I'm just saying to you, that my point is, if you have to give away your child or a relative, uh, someone that's close to you, but a child, under four or whatever their tender age make sure you give them hugs i mean i know chinese people are like more severe or they have too much uh pride austerity but give them a hug and say it's gonna be okay if you say it's gonna be okay and explain it to them 
uh, that somehow, even though maybe they may not understand every word you're saying, but that will settle it uh, in their hearts and mind. They will have more peace. But this was so frightening. Uh, and I did not learn the term uh, so-called the night terror, uh, that which caused me. They said the neighbor of uh, at that time called the police because call they had to call the police because every night I would rise up at the exact same time. I didn't know why. I didn't plan on it. That when my father dropped me off at that total frightening dark alley, dark staircase, I would rise up from wherever I was sleeping. Was in my bed. It was just like a, a, a footrest, not even futon. They put the bed. Let me. I was just like, literally on the floor, uh, and then it was very uncomfortable. But I would rise up like a zombie and go ah, and all night. Uh, no wonder it hurts the next day. I don't know. <laughs> but that's why the neighbor were calling the police and they were like trying everything to shut me down. And I, I did not know I was doing that. Anyway, so that night terror really explains a lot about the insecurity. I'm not the only one who was, who was ever terrorized in their youth. And uh, somehow, <laughs> that somehow we end up in the so-called this Hollywood media industry. Uh, I'm not the only one. Anyways, I'm not here to say that there's a, uh, I'm not trying to be a psychiatrist or, uh, but I know for sure there was an impact that was done to my soul. Uh, that was all, that was all. Uh, anyways, so uh, let me just fast forward and, and forget about all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I'm just saying he did the best he could, but then he got into womenizing because he was a good looking guy. Um, and because he was begging my mother to come back to Taiwan, uh, you know, at that time, that she she was she she was just ignoring him. Anyway, so uh, he would show up every weekend and and uh, you know put me on the, his back of the, on the motor scooter. But he would cry. He would sing and cry. And I didn't know. I was just I'm trying to hang on for dear life. You know, he'll take me out for a spin and have some uh, not beef intestine. Or <laughs> at that time, it was very popular. The vendors would have. Uh, the so-called the sheep intestine <laughs> and I don't know I loved it it was so good so I was addicted to all these things and he would do he, he would have done his best he would have taken me out at least he tried to come once a week but I never know who I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Dr. Jack or Mr. Hyde that's why I'm so I'm loathing the alcohol because sometimes he was he's in a bad mood because he would take me out uh, you know, he actually had the photo shoot and try to shoot, meaning that he took pictures of me. Um, at that time, I believe he had a cameraman friend. I know he paid him and they all took him out to eat or whatever and shot pictures of me and sent it to my mother and tried to get her to come back. And uh, so he struggled. I'm just saying he struggled. He did the best he could. I'm not holding a grudge against him. Uh, I was just saying, God forgive him for committing suicide. Papa Fu, uh, it's impossible, is it? As it was, he had so many women later on. Um, he had a different wife. The lady at that time he was dating, when. You know, he was trying to woo my mother to come back, but then there was a lady in the same radio station that uh, he dated, and she had two kids and a husband that, who was on the ship all the time. So, can you imagine that? Uh, well, she, she became an adulterer, but I kind of went to their house and played with their kids because that woman um, wanted my dad so much. She actually left the very so-called high-ranking naval officer husband. The husband was not there at all, uh, and she promised to take care of me. But you know how it is that afterwards, after they got together, uh, there's conflict. See, it's inevitable because I was not her flesh and blood, so they uh, eventually try to get me away but this is how my dad did things he, he didn't even say anything to my auntie and then he again rode his scooter and just took me away I have a little backpack knapsack or whatever took me away 
uh, that was, I mean, he was a little psychotic. Uh, yes, at that time he was getting psychotic. He drank. Uh, I never know. One week is Jacko and one week is high. Uh, I never know. He show up for no reason, bloody drunk, and beat the shit out of me. Literally, I could not walk. And uh, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe I, I should have sued him, right? Um, broke my hip or whatever. I mean, it, thank God he beat me so bad with the, I think there was a, they use a pole. It was bigger than this. Uh, he just grabbed it from um, my auntie's bathroom. It was like to open up the uh, the window that's on top, right? To kind of prop it open. So it had the end that was sharp. And then he did not start beating the shit out of me uh, until miraculously the other end cut him. That's when he stopped and I, I could not walk. I could not go to school and everything. So it really left a, um, indelible scar. When I say indelible, just like, I can't erase it. I try to erase it. I'm just saying this not to hold a grudge. Oh, okay, all right, I'm just telling you this story. But uh, he wanted me, uh, eventually, so they still, we still had problems so when I said that with the stepmom, so to speak. I'm not saying she was phony trying to be nice to me, but she said that she, uh, she definitely would take care of me and all that kind of stuff. That's how my dad got boat and uh, kidnapped me back and thought we can have a family but you know like I said she uh, the the said mom had two kids of her own so there's some kind of conflict there whatever <laughs> so excuse me for the snot <laughs> uh, and uh, I, yeah I should be glad because Jesus took my my dad um, I just did not know I kind of want to fast forward so my father eventually wanted me to uh, because my mother came to America and became a nurse, so wanted me to come to America as well, even though I was just like a plant yanked out the roots and I could not, I just could not survive um, because uh, I guess the devil would have it. I'm not saying, yeah, you know, I'm not saying the timing is everything that the timing was demonic or whatever but uh somehow this this person this man um obviously is a bad timing when i was uh, like a young adolescence or 10 12 years old anyways uh first i came to america i mean i was just like i was such a uh dork uh i want to say fresh off the boat or not even just a dork off the boat a <laughs> d-o-b um <clears throat> So, and it was a bad situation because I, I, I think my mother felt like it was forced upon her. She just got married, engaged to this Chinese man uh, who's actually uh, overstaying his student visa from Taiwan. I don't know if that's intentional. He married her, but, uh, you know, he, he literally tried to kill me. Yeah literally tried to kill me, like, bang my head against the wall. But uh, anyway, so I escaped and ran and everything. So they both feel bad what, nowadays. I'm just saying at that time, nobody looked for me. I was out, I was out just wandering around, like a wanderer uh, for, I don't know, for a long, long time. Uh, but I forgive them because they thought I was dead. This guy thought I was dead. Um, and uh, that's how I said eventually I came to know the Lord because, you know, the screw, it's like Alice in Wonderland and you're smoking this, you're doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, I even joked about it, like, you know, people were rolling up dollar bills. It was a trend, you know, those things like snorting cocaine that's cut on the mirror with a razor. Uh, like, that's a hip thing. Oh, that's going to get you a stardom and thing. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, that's foolish and uh, that's rubbish. Um, but, you know, we, we don't know Jesus. He was just like, oh, yeah, it's just party, party, party. Um, anyhow, what I was saying is uh, my, my father, eventually he had, like, another mistress and blah, blah, blah. So, um, he, it's miraculously, miraculously, somebody who, he made a name for himself. Because uh, I was saying that he became a broadcaster after... Uh, he was discarded, yes, by the uh, their Chinese, their, uh, their MBA, that they did not want to hire him as coach. So he had such a grudge, he went to 
another Asia team. This is all about Asia. I mean, you, you could be bored or whatever. But it was Malaysia. They were the suckiest. That they were like you know the the so called the uh, uh, stumbling block or uh, you know not not stumbling block. They were uh, everybody can beat on them. What do you call that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyways. So they were being trampled on, and then he coached them, and miraculously he uh, he uh, had a chip. Like I said, he won. So he beat the that Chinese team in that Asia League, and that was a big deal. And then he made a, a name for himself and uh, the broadcast. So it, it's like their ABC broadcast, their state-owned broadcast, or hired him. That's how he reached his uh, fame. But that. Uh, it's very troublesome because then women, 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 drinking, 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 more women. You see, there's different kind of women. And uh, I just that doesn't end. And he was on stage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, so he ruined his uh, intestine. His stomach was removed. And uh, I, I think it was a very severe surgery because, you know, half of his stomach was removed uh, due to ulcer because the the stress and the alcohol and the smoking that caught up to him but thank god he was young still so he recovered he lived there was a very severe um surgery because he was bleeding from the stomach or whatever uh anyway so you guys know how ulcer works right eat through it like a hole just eat through your stomach and then uh you die so unless they cut that rotten portion off but what i'm trying to say is that will lead to the later the demise with the compromising of your uh, your digestive system. Uh, don't get me wrong. I know people go to like their stomach staple and that sort of thing, try to lose weight. Uh, he, my dad wasn't trying to lose weight. He was just dying from a big hole, like you know, in his stomach, and it was rotting away. So they have to cut it, and he barely survived that surgery. A lot of blood loss and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so there's very severe surgery when you have this uh, called the gastro pass and this surgery. But what affected him? I know this for a fact. It's the digestive system. If you did not know, your digestive system, the microbe, is your life. This is, that's your brain. You think your brain is here, but your brain is in the gut. There's a, always a balance, a constant struggle when you have like bad micro. It means that if, you know, when you eat a lot of things, so carbohydrate, which is now all GMO, it's not a good word, they genetically manufacture these things so that it will tolerate this so Monsanto, the pesticides is worse than agent orange that kills your brain cells and they try to they try to fool you by saying oh it's safe it's not genetically compatible with humans whatever it is yes it kills the bacteria but we are bacteria we have good bacteria it kills the good bacteria so with uh, anyways i'm getting a little excited still with that said i'm just analyzing what killed him it doesn't kill you overnight, it kills you slowly. And when your digestive system is compromised and everything else has to work harder, and your liver was compromised because it was an alcoholic, and remember, you know, some of alcoholics are very friendly and nice. Oh, yeah, hi, Bobby, yeah, I love you, man. I know my ex-husband was like that a little bit, but then they also get liquid courage. And some people, they're alcoholics, and when they drink, they become really mean and vicious. So I think that, you know, that's when I say the the Dr. High that comes out of him. And, um, the, uh, uh, okay, so the lifestyle, the kind of food, the kind of fuel, when I say food is fuel, you have only one vehicle. Imagine, I guess people change your vehicle all the time, right? Every three years, you say it gets worn or whatever. Um, but when you have your vehicle, you try to give it oh, the bit, maybe the best that you can because the mechanic will say, it's gonna cost you more money, but I'm gonna give you a synthetic blend. It's not as expensive as synthetic oil, uh, but it's still gonna be $68 instead of $19.95, you see? but. Because China, I would say, you know, majority of the world, mostly when they suffer for poverty, I, I would say, except for nowadays, a lot of Korean because of the fermented veggie, and that would strengthen your gut bacteria. But 
just eating my dad loved dumplings noodles and uh, he just like a lot like a lot of Chinese people, they ingrained about this uh, carbohydrate. You have to have that. It's king. You have to have noodles and whatever. But just remember, that is the root of inflammation in your gut. It, when it takes over, finally, when you get older, when you're young, yes, you can survive it, but there's a, always a battle in your gut. And your gut is your brain, is your as your livelihood so when you get older and that succumb to this all these uh, inflammation caused by eating uh, constantly eating noodles and rice and uh, so-called processed food like in America uh, what can I say <laughs> you know people just dying rushing to the uh, Burger King and uh, uh, the drive-ins uh, I cannot believe it there are there were actually a traffic jam. They have to have someone directing traffic at the in and out Burger. So, uh, I get scorned at because, oh, Cheryl is too good that she will not touch any of these pasta. Well, the fact is, that's what they gave me when I was a kid. So, I have to have a repair mechanism because they, they gave nothing to me. It's just a bowl of rice. With a little bit of lard, I said that to Chris the other day. Why do I want to go back to that? Because that's all they could afford. There was no cow, no meat, nothing. Not even vegetable because they were very expensive. So bowl of rice is the cheaper thing you can get. A uh, little bit of lard. This way the, the pork fat uh, will satiate because, uh, you know, as you eat carbohydrate, you get more hungrier. So they don't want you to, ah, as a kid, as a kid, ah, crying, I'm hungry. And this is how they satiate you. And then a little bit of soy sauce. That's your food source. And uh, you, you should be happy that you have food, you see. Uh, so with that said, I, why do I want to go back to that? I'm just saying now I could, you know, I could ditch that. I could say I have enough. I have a different source, um, you know, a friendly bacteria because I swim. So I take in a lot of chlorine and that's definitely toxic to your good bacteria. Um, you know, because when you, even when you rinse your mouth, right? That's why fluoride and all these things are designed. They're not designed commercial stuff to keep you healthy. They're designed to deceive you. I didn't know that. The word is deceive you. Because why would I put fluoride in the freaking drinking water when you know fluoride itself is toxic? You know that. It's a neurotoxin. If you did not know, even just look it up. Fluoride and neurotoxin. So even with children, you don't know how much you're getting out of tap water. That's ridiculous. Anyways, so the world is designed to kill you. Why? They don't want you to live long. Uh, why do they want to pay you, you know, what, what I say, like Medicare and all that kind of stuff, right? They do want to get you hooked on a diabetic drugs because it kills you slowly you die slowly they can make a lot of money from pharmaceutical companies but um this is why this uh, this thing about euthanasia comes into play he got cancer so when i say he got cancer we i, I try to stress that even to a bunch of folks i mean i'm not preaching that i believe he accepted the lord i know that he did my dad he's with the lord jesus and jesus forgive him uh, but one sin, I have to say, you know, I'm not a judge. God is a judge, uh, even in the believer community, because he was well known in uh, Taiwan, and he, he actually done good things. He's he uh, formed a youth for Jesus basketball team. Their uniform all have cross. Uh, I don't know where it is. I'm gonna try to find it. Uh, look at this guy. Wasn't he handsome? He's a very handsome man, and uh, it's called to play for Jesus. And that was the basketball team that he formed. So he was doing things right there. He was one of the players. See that? He designed that cross for the youth basketball team. For Jesus. It says, come to... Uh, my friend called me.